Hi everybody, I'm Christian. Welcome to Pico 8 Hero. Welcome to um, our roguelike tutorial. And so yes, I'm sorry for teasing you last time around. But this time we are gonna go for procedural generation for sure. We have a beautiful level. It's fun to play. You know, it's a bit random because of the the kind of like weapons you get are a bit random. The items are there's not a lot of variation with the items, and there's not a lot of variation with the enemies. It's always like the same kind of challenge. But you can see that this is going to be an interesting game. Like there's some interesting um, strategic decisions even with those basic elements here, with, without having having the variation from the items, and um, you can tell kind of like what kind of look what kind of like um, layout we want to have our procedural generation one generate so i already walked you through the algorithm that we're going to do here so i'm going to open up the final tab for us and this is going to be our gen tab this is going to be generation level generation and so this is also the moment we're going to have to say goodbye to our test level this is, was a good level you did good level you did you did perhaps too good um, so I want to actually now, um, let me think about this. Do I want to delete this? I haven't actually thought about, I haven't actually thought this through. I guess we have to actually loop, loop through this and delete it. You, we might, we might actually. So let's not do it um, or we could not do it. No, we have to delete this level. Because you know, every time we generate a level, we're gonna we're gonna start with the tabula rasa. You know, we're gonna start with the uh, with a level that is filled with um, with walls. So that's what something I want to be doing now. I just want to fill the entire map with walls, so we can start do uh, start. We can start doing our procedural generation. We can start creating those rooms. So as I already explained to you previously, uh, we're gonna start by placing a bunch of rooms. Period. Again, very important very complicated process we want this process to be um to tackle one problem after another that's generally like so far you know the challenges that we had were kind of like small always like okay we want to make a guy move that's fine but now it's like this big step we want to have like bam create a create a level and that's daunting and that's something that you can't pull off like in one go but if you you like inch yourself forwards uh, again, uh, the, the term for that is in, in compartmentalization. When you inch yourself forward, you know, small little victory every time, uh, breaking down a big procedure into really small snips. Big procedure, undoable, but small steps, actually something you can achieve. Long, long uh, story short. Mm, so let me see. I'm, I will be, um, I will be um, looking at my, um, at my, uh, a prototype just to like to kind of see what I was doing. Huh? Oh, that seems good. Okay, so function map gen. This will just generate a map. It, right now, we're not going to accept any any um, uh, parameters. Maybe later on, we there's going to be like um, some way of tweaking maybe the map. Maybe you want them like the, the deeper you go, the more chaotic the maps should become. Uh, but I'm not sure how you would pull that off. So just like map gen, the dance. And so that's something we're going to do directly immediately at the start of the game. And again, later on, we might actually uh, do it a bit differently, but I'm going to do map gen for now. Um, one important thing is I want to turn off the fog. I want to see the entire level because um, I want to just see what, what the, what the um, generator is creating. Now we're going to start off. And again, this is a bit... Generally, we're going to, we're going to have to think about this a little bit. Um, this is generally the part where we're losing a lot of tokens. Look at this. Just like looping through all of the stuff without any actually doing anything. Just the actual loop. How much does it cost? Around 10 tokens. More than 10 tokens, actually 12 tokens in total. That's how much we will pay just for looping through the, through the, through every, through the level. So, mm, yeah, that doesn't feel so good, does it? No, it's, it's, it doesn't. It's, it's, it feels very bad, actually. So... Um, so yeah, we are gonna have to. Um, we are gonna have to. There is a way of making this maybe a bit more efficient, but that makes the, our, our code less readable. So I want to keep this around like this. But in the future, we this is this is one moment, one place where, if we are really starving for for tokens and we want to like really expand the gameplay like fundamentally as you continue expanding this, not 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 something that we're gonna do here perhaps. This is the place where you could maybe save a bunch of tokens if you can somehow make. Um, 
like a function that has like a callback, you know, you can, you can do the stuff like that, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna just fill it with, with walls. Let's see how this looks. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's interesting that it spawned creatures. Oh, I guess it makes sense, yeah. Um, so yeah, let me remove all of this. Let, let, I'm gonna keep this around because maybe uh, we want to take an item. We want to actually have some items to test maybe some functionality. So I'm going to keep this around. I will definitely remove this. We're not going to need this. Um, yeah. Good. 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 All right. So this is our level now. Procedural generation done. Now, here's something that you uh, might be tempted to do, but it won't work. You might be tempted to do procedure duration something like this, where it's like, ah, I'm just gonna do like a random, just random, you know, like it's like, this is like the simplest procedure generation, where it's like, if R and D um, is smaller than 0 0.5, then, and then we're gonna set a empty spot. That's gonna be one, right? Like something like this. Hey, procedural generation, we are done. Thank you so much. Uh, so the coffee will be in doobly do. Check out the t-shirts. Um, yeah, you, as you can see, there is a bit of an issue here. Like this is the like I think it's a good like example of to show you like what doesn't work in you know, these kind of things. So first of all, it's not guaranteed that we can actually make our way through this, right? So we're not actually there's no path here the 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 generator doesn't actually make sen make sure that like like even if you placed uh, uh, the exit at a random situation there might not be actually a path so this is actually we have to actually th think about this okay so we, whatever we do we have to make sure that our generator actually carves a path through like actually allows us to get through through the entire level okay but also I kind of like don't really see a structure it doesn't look like a connection of rooms it looks maybe more like a chaotic cave so that's another thing that, that we kind of have to think about and how do we make actually clusters of rooms. That's why I, I went to, I talked to you through this entire process that is so complicated because I want to have like this structure with like, this is a room, this is a hallway. And the third thing I want to also um, keep in mind is there's something I don't like about the way the tiles are. I don't want to have situation, the, the moment, the, um, the place where I'm standing at right now, this place here, this looks awkward that there is like this diagonal you see that there's a diagonal. If I was able to move diagonally, I would be able to squeeze in between the tiles here. Um, because there's like, you know, there, if I go down right here, down right, uh, then um, there is another space there. There's like a, a diagonal movement here, possibly, technically. And um, that doesn't look good. Period. That just doesn't look good. Um, and later on, I will have like a more beautiful tile set that has like we already saw it in the in the Midnight Dungeon uh, game. Um, so um, I want to I want to make sure that my procedural generator will avoid these kind of situations where where there's a, there there's two empty tiles diagonally to each other, um, so, uh, and but otherwise separated by wall tiles. Don't want that. Good. Just so you know. Good. Okay, so I want to create now, so what I want to be doing here, this map gen function, this will be just like our master plan function. This won't actually have any, it will have very little factual, factual, you know, doing things stuff in here. By the way, this is something that we might actually, this is something we might actually save some, some tokens on later on. Um, but this will just like delegate different functions. So we don't have like this very crazy fun because I had this in the past before where I had like the map generation function and it did like a lot of like things inside the function actually. And it was like this very long function and you didn't know what you're doing. This is just gonna be like calling a bunch of other functions and the other functions will take care of the actual work. Actual work, first step is gen rooms, generate and place rooms. And then here, because this is gonna be a long tab, we're gonna have the same thing as the other one where it's like, okay, this is about rooms. And then later on, there's gonna be the maze and later on, there's gonna be some other stuff, decorations, whatever. So this is the first step. And now all of the functions that follow are about rooms. Uh, this is just so we can like have a uh, grip on of the, of the structure of the entire thing. So function general rooms. This function, so what we wanna do now 
is we want to create a room of random size, a room of random size, and then we're going to try to place the room on the map. The first room will probably, there's going to be, we're going to find some kind of spot. It's not going to be difficult. But as soon as there's already a room on the map and you want to place the second room, you kind of have to figure out, you know, where does the second room actually fit? And there's like multiple ways of solving this. Um, one problem that we're going to get is that um, it's going to be difficult to uh, find um, like how what is going to be the process of how we're going to place the room, how we're going to find out if a room fits. Like a trivial approach would be to we have a room and you have a function that says like okay at this location if we place this room at this location it will fit. Um, and the, so if you want to place the second room you're just going to try random locations just going to try random locations until you find a location that works that is not good this is not good because if you try that we're going to maybe try this as, as first thing if you do that you might you have a situation where you try a lot of times placing this room and you never just find this one location where it just perfectly fits but otherwise all the other doesn't fit and so you so you might have like a um, cut off where it's like okay try it 20 times and if you haven't found a location by then we're going to try a different sized room um but if you have that and you know the procedural generation will take a lot of time and it depends very much on how um, you know how the random number generator uh, pans out and that's kind of like iffy so um so yeah that's something we have to consider um, so instead, what we want to might maybe do is something like we're going to go through all of the tiles, all of the coordinates that are possible. We're going to go through all of them and we're going to place every time place the room. And then we're going to have a list of possible locations that are OK for this room that we said, like, OK, at these coordinates, the room was fitting like we have candidates the way you had previously. And then from this list of possible locations for this room, we're going to pick a random one. That's going to be a better one than then we are sure if we are actually like even if the room is very unwieldy and there's just like little just a very few locations where it would actually fit we're going to find those locations uh, and we're not relying on like a random number generator throwing the exact location for this unwieldy room to 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 fit generally what happens with this kind of random location kind of like um room placement is that um rooms tend to always go smaller because then those are more likely to be placed than bigger rooms who are for them for them it's very difficult to find a location where they fit very long explanation maybe you at this point you're like what is he even talking about rooms what the I just do the thing okay um right so let me go with something like local r equals uh, random room we're going to create a room what is a room um um so we might actually we might put like a max a maximum width and maximum height. What did I do last time around? Yeah, okay, let's go like five times five. Maximum width, maximum height. Okay. Um, now we, let's go this this random room function. Function random room maximum width, maximum height. Maybe we actually, actually want to have a bigger maximum width. So let me see, what did I do last time? How did I even do this? Okay, okay, got it, got it, got it. Mm, that's interesting, okay, good. So we're gonna do something like, first we're gonna figure out the width of our room. So the width is gonna be, we absolutely, the smallest possible room we're gonna have is three. That's gonna be hard coded. We never gonna have a room smaller than three. It's bad, bad mojo to have a smaller room than three because then it's like two times type two room is like, it's nothing, it's nothing. <laughs> So um, so at least three, so it's, you can have like a middle tile in the room. So for example, if you want to place a chest in a room, you can be sure that you will have a tile that you can walk around without the chest actually being in, in the way. Um, okay, so then we're going to add a floor random and then that's going to be maximum width minus, minus two. So this way uh, we're going to generate a room somewhere between three and the maximum width. Uh, that's going to be that's going to be safe, uh, saved in a variable w. Now, here's something I want. Let's, let's do the same thing for height, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna discuss something real quick. So we're gonna go maximum height 
equals um, the same procedure as except um, uh, the height is going to be the same procedure as except height here. And then we're going to create the actual room. So we're going to return open close per curly brackets and then here's going to be some some qualities or room. We're going to set a starting location for now. Why not? There's going to be a position where the first tile of the room of the inside of the room actually begins. There's going to be a width. Um, so maybe just, just so it's clear what is a local variable and what not, we're going to go underscore w here with and there's going to be height. Um, and for now, that's going to be enough. Later on, we might add some additional features. I, in my final version, I had some additional data that I saved for every room. For example, something we might add save later on is how many exits are there in this room? So we, if there's a room with just one exit, we know that this is kind of like a dead end kind of room. And for those rooms, maybe there's going to be higher percentage that there's going to be a chest spawning inside because that's going to be, ooh, that's like you found a dead end. And it's like, okay, I guess I'm going to get out. Oh, no, there's a chest inside. And it's like, oh, chest, good. Uh, also, we might save here if there's already a chest inside, so we're not spawning multiple chests in the same room. You know, there's like multiple things we can save here. There is a bit of an issue with this, and that's I figured out what uh, ideal size of a room is, what the uh, ideal surface of a room is, and I figured out 35 is the is is a good maximum size of a room. And now, if you have five times five, that's 25. So you know. Um, we're not gonna get that um, maximum size, but just so we can like like clamp maximum size, clamp max uh, for, uh, area. We we want to make sure that the floor, the, the rooms don't don't get too big. Just like so for the future. Again, we start with five five. It's they're they're gonna be small enough. That's good. Okay. Okay. So. The next step is we're just going to place a room. I just want to place one single room and then we're going to think about this later on. So let's go like place room R. Just placing a room. Okay, so next function is placing a room. How does that work? Function place room R. How does that work? Well, um, we're going to do the same thing that I, that I said previously. We're going to loop through all of the locations in the map and we're going to try to place the room. And then we're going to have a list, list of candidates, local canned. Uh, and we're going to add those locate, add candidate locations to our candidates list. And then we're going pick, to pick a random uh, candidate from the list. If we, our list of candidates remains empty, that means it's not possible to place this room. That's just it. That's what we're gonna do. So we're looping through the entire map and we're gonna now like figure out if the room fits. And for that, we're gonna use yet another function. You can see that this is going like down the rabbit hole. So if does room fit, then room x, y, then, so if the room fits and we're gonna figure out how we, we're gonna do this later on, then we're gonna do add um, f and d, uh, wait, wait, fit, uh, add, uh, uh, can't, I mean, can't, and then we're going to add x equals x, y equals y. And again, I don't like when the variables are repeating themselves. So just in case I'm going to be going to use underscore x and underscore y for these guys. Now we can speed things up a little bit here, um, because we know that the room has a certain width. So it actually doesn't make sense to to look at you know the, the last edge of the room, right? That, that doesn't make sense. That's that's uh, the rooms will not like the rooms not going to fit, right? The rooms at least three spaces um, three spaces width in width. So looking at the final coordinate of the of the of the um, of the map doesn't make sense because they won't fit anyway. They will reach the, end, the edge of the of the map. So we, something we can do here is gonna we're gonna uh, subtract the width of the room from from the 15 and the height of the room from this 15. So it's like it's looking at least like somewhere in inside the, the map. It's not looking for locations where it won't fit anyway. So just let let's just for a second imagine that this worked. So we're gonna go um, if hashtag canned equals zero. 
then a return false end. Uh, this place room function will return a value, like it will let us know if the placing worked. Um, and then I'm gonna go C here. Um, C equals, um, now we have our tool here, updates. We have our tool that is gonna be, oh, no, that's not the updates, uh, tools. I said tools, Christian, what? Get rend, gets a random entry from a, from a, from an array. So get rend C, that will get us, a, a, wait a minute, not C, a cant. It will get us um, a random room from our positions that we found out are suitable for our room. And then now we're gonna place the actual room. So um, yeah, we, that's that's where we're actually gonna do use a very similar um, for next loop. And you can see we're often looping. We're very often looping through, like doing this like you know double loop situation here that we have here. Um, but this time we're not looping through the entire map. We're just looping through the width of the room and the height of the room. Mm, minus one because we start at zero. Um, so if the room is three tiles height, it's like coordinate to zero, one, two, not three, because that would that would make the room four tiles width. So that's why I always subtract one. You know, like this, this always the same problem. And then we're gonna m set um, x, y, and we're just gonna plop down uh, our regular free empty space one. Uh, not quite correct. Not quite correct. Um, so what we have to do here is going to be uh, x plus rx and y plus ry. Still not quite correct. So the rx and y are the positions of the room and we haven't set those positions yet. So that's also something we're going to do here. So we're going to go after we pick the candidate, we're going to set rx, the position of this room, the left top corner of the room, the left top tile of the room is going to be rx is going to be c dot x and ry the y position of the room is going to be c dot y and again here's where we're going to actually loop through the entire room and um, set all of the sort of set all of the tiles of that room to a floor tile to one Okay, so the only thing for us to do is to find out does room fit. But you know what? I'm getting nervous. So let's start this function. Function does room fit r x y and and we're gonna make it just return true. It's it's gonna be fine. It, uh, I just want to see if everything else works. And then later on we're gonna make sure that this this does room fit function. But for now we we, we play. Uh, placing one room anyway. So there's a bit of a problem here. Mm. What is your problem? What, what, what did it say? Uh, X is a nil value. Uh, okay. That's odd. That's not something I wanted. There is R here. Didn't we get a candidate? Oh yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. We didn't we didn't change these things, so yeah, that's good. No. Okay, so you see it placed a room. That's good. Something I want to be doing here, generally, I'm gonna do a map gen, I'm gonna assign it to one of our buttons. So when you press a button, we're gonna get a new room, just so we can see like a um, new uh, map. So just so we can see what it actually, you know, what it actually looks like when we generate a bunch of levels. Update game. A we do uh, update game. Yeah, do but I guess do but is the thing. Do but there we go. Do but <laughs> it makes me laugh every time. Else if but equals four, then bam map gen. Okay, so now when I press Y or Z, I guess in your case, you get a bunch of other rooms. So you can see it places a room. It did place it at the end, at the left or upper edge, but let's see if it places at the lower edge. Because I might got something wrong here. It doesn't place the rooms at the lower edge, I think. 
We might be looping wrongly through through our coordinates. That's fine. Yeah, I think we're looping wrongly through this. So let's fix this real quick. So it's not 15, but 16 minus room width and height. Let's, yeah, now it plays, places it on the edge. Now it's correct. Good. Cool. So now we get rooms. And now, of course, we can use the same procedure to place multiple rooms. So we could now, of course, be like, okay, let's place a second room. But now you get to the problem. Now the rooms are merging. Uh, so we want to make sure that the um, that this um, this does fit room function that this actually checks if if we were to place a given room at a given position, um, would it ma merge with a uh, with other, some other existing room? That's that's our idea here. Okay, so um, we're going to use a very similar loop than that we used here. Um, but here's something that we're going to do differently here now. So. We're not just looking through the, so a room is just the empty space. It's not the walls outside of the room. It's just the empty space. Um, so we're not just checking the tiles that are the empty space of the room. We also have to check the walls, if th those have something in them, if they're walkable or not. Because if we just check the empty space inside, two rooms might still touch each other. They still might be like right next to each other with no wall in between and that also looks weird that looks as if they merge into one big room so we want to also make sure that that there's always at least a wall between the rooms so we actually have to look a little bit outside of the of the room a little bit outside of the room and so that's what we're doing here, what we're going to do here so instead of the zero we're going to start with minus one and instead of the width minus one we're just going to go width and height so we're going uh, all drawing through all of the tiles of the room plus one on each on each side. Um, okay, so we're gonna do something like if is walkable. We're gonna use our walkable function. Now we don't need to. The te technique could also get like f get here, but I think walkable uh, m get. I mean, we could just check the tile, and if that tile is wall, then we're just gonna ignore it. But I think like it's it's a good idea to to get in the habit of using is our is walkable function. I think that's good. Uh, and then here um, we're gonna go x plus r dot x. Is that correct? No, it's not. Um, because we're checking if the room fits at this position. So it's like um, undersc underscore x plus x. So this is the underscore x, that's the x from our loop. And x is the, the position at which we are checking. And then we do the same thing with y. And we don't care about, like, we don't care about mobs, so we are fine with the default check. If it's walkable, then uh, return false. As soon as we find one walkable tile, we don't even care about the rest anymore. We can just literally be like, okay, yeah, this is not a good place for this room because we found a walkable tile either somewhere in the room or like one tile around the room. And if we went through this entire process and we haven't found a problem, I'm gonna return a false, uh, true. And now this is really cool that walkable is also checking for if something is in bounds because it will check for the in bounds as well now. It's, 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 it's fine, it's good. So let's see, um, unclosed function here happening, then, and, and, and. What did I do wrong? How, how did I wrong you? Do you guys see it? Oh, there's a return true at the beginning. That's should not be the case. I'm not sure why. Okay, got it. Oops, I didn't want to do that. So now you can see we can generate a bunch of rooms and they are not touching, touching each other. Eh, hey, cool. So what happens if we continue this? Let's say we want to have five rooms. Five rooms, oops. Five rooms, four rooms. No, five rooms, that's good. Five rooms, good. No, no, that was four rooms, five rooms, five rooms, five rooms, five, five, 
four. Sometimes it's four rooms. Bad. What happened here, probably? Well, we generated pretty big rooms. Like all of these are five times five. We, the, the number generator is, is went, went a bit overboard and created really big rooms for us. Um, so this is the moment where we kind of have to like wrap this thing a little bit up in a bit of a structure uh, that uh, if it notices that it's difficult to place a given room, it will try a smaller room instead. Something like this. Stuff like that. <laughs> I'm embracing it now, whatever. Screw you guys. <laughs> um, okay, so let me see, because this was a bit of a weird structure that we had. So we're gonna do a repeat until. So we're gonna do this a bunch of times, is what I'm thinking. Um, and then we're gonna have uh, two, uh, two variables that will kind of like control how many times we tried placing room. One is gonna be called fmax. And the only one comes to be R max. F max is how many failures we can have. I f figured out four was a five was a good now um, number. F uh, and R, R max is how many rooms we want to want to be placing. And four five uh, might be a, might be a good number. Let's go with five maybe. Let's try it. Or four. It's uh, it's you can tweak it around to it yourself. So real quick, what what that means? Um, this means that fmax is how many times we can fail in a row placing a randomly generated room. How many times can we fail at placing a room on the, on the, uh, on the board uh, in, in sequence? So as we saw, like we tried to place, place five rooms, in the, in the, we placed four and the fifth didn't really fit anymore, that was one failure. So we then generate a different room, uh, the room of a different size and try to place it one more time. And if we didn't succeed, that was the second failure and so forth. And after we f failed five times, um, the generator should be like, okay, I guess there is no space anymore and should like cancel our loop. Should be like, okay, we're not trying to place any more rooms. We're, we're, the, the map is full. I guess we generated so, ma so many big rooms. There is no way for us to place any rooms. Our max is how many rooms it should place. How many, like, because it can be like, okay, we placed, previously we had like, uh, just, just now, like this, this, this thing was five. We tried to place five rooms. So it will continue um, looping until either we reach F max or we reach R max. Either there was enough failures that we can give up and stop placing any more rooms because there is not enough space, or until we actually satisfied our our desire for rooms, we place as many rooms as we wanted. Um, so every, every time we place a room, we're going to reduce R max, and every time we fail placing a room, we we're going to reduce F max. So we're going to keep looping until f max is smaller than equals zero or r max is smaller than equals zero. That's our, our goal here. So we're gonna go if place room r, then else and. So if we place the room and it worked, then we're gonna go r max minus equals one. We place a room, one room checked off. And we, if we fail play, uh, placing a room, we're gonna go f max minus equals one. And then uh, we might actually try to make a smaller room next time. Um, so um, one more thing here. I'm gonna place this guy in here. I'm gonna generate a room here. Mm, good, this is good stuff. This we don't need anymore. So now, now it will kind of like keep trying and keep trying smaller rooms until it reaches five. So let's see how this works. Oops. Five, 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 five. Let's try with bigger Armex numbers. So we kind of um, gonna get this, let's try nine, right? So you see, oh, it actually, it actually stopped. It actually stopped at five. Now it has just four, interesting. This is five. So this is interesting, it actually, I'm actually surprised myself that this, this works so good. We can even do like a debug. Uh, one equals f max. So like figuring out what the f max is and what the r max is at the, at the end of placement. 
just to see like what what causes. So fmax. So this stopped with failures, 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 failures. Oh, there's a bit of an issue here. Because our max was nine in all cases. That's weird. It should count down, right? Oh, I think we're not never returning true when we place a room. Yeah, yeah, we're never returning true. A little bit of an issue here. So now you can see it, this is now better. Uh, it's still failing on the on the F max. So it's still still see. Let's, let me be more clear about this. <clears throat> Let's go, let's go fails. Rooms. Like this. So and now it's held, it, there's like zero fails left. So, so we can like run out of fails. So it try to place as many rooms as possible and it run out of space for, for to placing rooms. And it managed to uh, place all but three of the nine required rooms. Um, now it was actually able to place all of the nine rooms. So it actually stopped placing rooms because nine is enough for, for the generator. That's kind of how you can make um, and generally it will really run out of fails sometimes like in this case it would run out of rooms that's the idea you could uh, even uh, do the armex randomly so it's kind of like you sometimes force it to make more rooms and sometimes not uh, again like in origin i had just four rooms not, not, not really a lot of rooms uh, and in this case you always actually or pretty much always manage to place the rooms so let's me bump it up to five we can like tweak around with those numbers a little bit Finally, something I like to do here, maybe that's not, not required, but I think it's, it's, it pays off. So we're gonna go local uh, and max width and max height, height. And that's gonna be five, five. So this random room will get a max width and a max height. And when we fail, we're gonna go the max width minus equals one, and max height, max max height is also minus. Width. So we're gonna shrink the room down as we go, uh, as we fail. So the next room has a higher percentage chance. Like if you fail, the next room that you uh, that you're placing uh, will be the higher the percentage that it will, the the chance that will be smaller will be higher or the chance that it's big is gonna be lower, I guess. Maybe here we should um, do something like, we should make sure that we're not dropping below, mid below three. So it's like MW minus one. I'm gonna make sure that we never, the max height, height and max width are never lower than, than three. Like this. Actually, originally I had it even more complicated, interesting. Yeah, I kind of like, I shrank it down different. Oh, that's interesting. Let's try to do this. So if R is probably not necessary though. Whatever, it's if the width of the room is greater than the width of, if, if the height of the room. So if the room is wider than high, then I'm gonna reduce the width. Otherwise I'm gonna reduce the height. But actually, I don't think this will actually improve our, our the quality of our room that much. So I will just like mark it as a star. Like maybe it's not really required. Uh, I think we should bump it up here a little bit. Let's, let's first see how this looks. Okay, so I like this. So you can see most most of the time we're gonna get five rooms. Cool. Uh, one little detail I want to still add here. I was talking about how I want the um, surface of the room to never exceed 35. That was like a, something that I figured out uh, empirically that was, was good. Because if you bump up the max, the max width and max height now to like, you know, like 10, like we're gonna start with really big rooms. You get something like this, and that doesn't, that's not a good room. And you also see like, it's, it's it kind of like keeps the other rooms out, so it's like, easy to get to do like these are like huge rooms they're not really fun to explore there's barely any space left for for uh, hallways and it looks very like it's a, like a very like a samey kind of experience 
So that's why I start with five five as starting values. But if you do that, all of the rooms are kind of like look also very the same. You know, and it's like okay, it's just always the same square room five times five, sometimes a bit smaller. So it, it would be interesting to have like some more variations. So rooms that are really wide, but narrow. So we're gonna want to make uh, uh, allow for really high values on the width and height. Um, but not um, letting the, um, the rooms go crazy in terms of surface area. Uh, and so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to first figure out the width. And then here we're going to go um, m m maximum height is going to be like once we figured out the width, we're going to restrict the maximum height. So it's um, so the even if we roll that random number generates generates the maximum height. Um, it won't exceed 35. That the the surface area of the room once exceeds 35. And I, would all, I know this is a bit mathy. I warned you. Procedural generation is a little bit a little bit tough. But you know, I'm I'm, I'm you figure it out. It's not that difficult. And a lot of the things I'm adding here are really just experience values. Something I, I figured out um, messing around with this. So we're gonna go max 35 divided by width, comma three minus two. Is that correct? That's something I had. So we're going to divide 35 through width. And if we divide 35 through width, and we're going to reach something smaller than three, then we're going to put in three. Why did I go minus two, though? That doesn't make sense. My minus two is here. So we don't need that, actually. I actually did it wrong. Shocking, shocking, I say. Okay, so something like this. So um, we divide 35 through width, and if we figure out, okay, the room is so wide that dividing by three will result in a room that is actually uh, uh, lower than, than three pixels, then we actually make the minimum pixels. So sometimes we, we allow rooms bigger than 35. Um, yeah, that's good. Uh, w is not good. Yeah, because we have to go underscore W. So you can see now the rooms should look a little bit crazier. Oh, wait a minute, did we? Did they? No, actually they don't look a little bit crazier. We have to set them to, to bigger values here. So now they, they yeah, they now look less squarish. They're still big, but. Um, they're big, but like in different shapes. They, I think they favor going sideways due to the way we generate this, but you know, I don't, I don't care too much at this point. Good. Um, I'm not sure what, to, I'm gonna maybe keep just like six times six, maybe not, not, not going too crazy. Yeah, this seems like good shapes. The last time I had like a different thing where it's like the first loom I, pray, I, I place is gonna be twice max width, ma max height. And then I'm gonna like, and so you have like a major room and then like children rooms. Uh, we can still tweak around on all those values. So we'll put it down here, tweak this. So maybe this will be um, five. So I originally had five, four in here. And originally I had five five in here, which is weird. Um, and then here I had to do first room bigger question mark. So we have like one room that's really weird. I'm not sure. See, it's kind of difficult to judge those values because we still don't have the hallways in between. So that's going to be kind of like our next step. So far, so good. We're creating the rooms, but now we're going to have to figure out how to create the create the passageways between them. But that's going to be it for today. Um, as again, uh, this is now getting a bit more complicated. So again, uh, as always, if you have any questions, put it down in uh, in the comment section. Uh, the code for this um, today's uh, uh, for the, today's code. For today's lessons, I guess, for today's episode, is gonna be in the doobly doo as well. Get the t-shirts, not this one, but the really good ones, and with our Discord channel, so you can discuss more about how to generate beautiful rooms. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.